Welcome to the Feeling Loudly podcast, a show about the power and magic of emotion explored through the lens of astrology, divination, and art. I'm your host, Jana. I'm an astrologer, a tarot reader, Akashic Records reader, poet, and witch, and I'm here to help you feel your feels. Hey everyone, happy Friday. Welcome to the feels. Today we're going to jump back into our usual episodes. I skipped last week. I was just having a hard time and I needed to take a break. And so leading up to the full moon felt like the right time. But um, yeah, it was good. I hope you're okay. I hope you're doing okay. And the post full moon afterglow feelings can be kind of a lot. And the Saj moon, while beautiful, was also pretty like heavy hitting and not in like a heavy downer necessarily kind of way, although that could be true for a lot of people, but more so in just like a huge shift. Like it felt like a really powerful and noticeable energetic shift on my side and on the side of a lot of people I've spoken to. So sometimes that can just be disorienting and it can come with a lot. So if that was you, I hope you're okay. And I hope you're resting. I hope rest is even an option for you and that you get to chill out, relax, drink some water, take a bath, eat some good food. Venus has entered Gemini and there's like a chatty quality to this transit. And so talking through stuff with people, processing stuff with people, connecting with people who you can have more of a lighthearted, playful connection with is good medicine. And I would recommend taking it. Okay, our feel for this Friday is security. And so security is a cool card to get after yesterday's Sag full moon episode where I talked about feelings of insecurity and feelings of like potentially low self-worth or beliefs that could prohibit us from going after what we want because we feel like we don't deserve it or we're not worthy of it or we might slip up or we might sabotage or like all of these things, all of these beliefs that come in and and tend to sort of dissuade us from following stuff that feels authentic and true to us. And so security is really the opposite of that. It's being grounded and rooted within the self. It's a feeling of, I would say, confidence or at least it's sort of the foundation that confidence is built upon is security a sense of solidity within the self, a sense of groundedness, knowing who you are, knowing your worth, and feeling rooted in that. So I'm going to start off, as usual, by reading the description from the guidebook. And again, this is the Reclaim Oracle by Little Darkness. I just like to announce it on every single episode because I really love this creator and hope some people will show them some love and get their beautiful decks. So security. Security is my two feet on the ground. From my feet, roots are shooting. The roots reach for the earth. The light of the earth shoots out of my soul, out into space, and beyond every sun in sight. I'm one with the earth, one with the night. I am the tree that keeps on growing. I'm anchored into pure love and into every planet. I become love. I am infinite. It's interesting as I was reading this, I am recording this at the little desk that I use to record all of my 22 days of tarot episodes. And I kind of heard this shakiness in my voice and this like shallowness. (laughs) I've been moving through a lot of grief. And so I have like this, you know, grief can reside in the lungs. And so there's this feeling of like shallow breath that's been really present for me lately. And, um, kind of like yearning to take a deep breath and yearning to like get deeper into the lungs, but also that fear that comes when you touch into an emotion that feels really heavy. And so I'm just conscious of that and I'm just verbalizing it because I'm trying to like move through these feelings myself and it feels appropriate that we're being brought into this rooted energy, into this grounded energy. And As I mentioned, I'm sitting at this table because my dishwasher is going in the other room and it's kind of loud. And so I brought myself back to this space that also happens to root me in security because there was a consistency and a sort of like 
power that I found in recording those 22 days of tarot episodes that I did for our last season, where I sat at this desk every day and recorded an episode and really poured myself into it. And I heard my own voice evolve in the course of that series. And I felt myself kind of like come into a new form of power. And so I was conscious of that as I was reading this description and like switching myself back into that mindset, because it's something that's been faltering for me recently. I've been experiencing insecurity recently and experiencing a feeling of shakiness. And I just kind of like got back on my feet this week after a really rough month and got back into the routine that I was doing every morning before those 20 days of tarot episodes. And getting back into that power, I meant into that pattern, has offered me a sort of refresh of that power that I felt I gained throughout that experience. And so for me, that's a form of rooting. And maybe for you, you can kind of orient yourself to a place in time where you experienced a sense of solidity, and that can be an access point to rooting back into a sense of security that might be hard for you to access at this moment. So if you're going through a phase of insecurity, if you're going through a period where you feel unstable or where things just feel really shaky and uncertain and it's creating anxiety and stress and fear, it's a beautiful practice to connect to a place in time where things felt more stable, not to like bypass, not to dissociate or like go into dreamland, but more so just to remember what that feels like. Like, how do you speak? How do you carry yourself? How does your body feel? If you can remember that somatic experience of security, what did it feel like? And so I'll describe what's going on for me. I am sitting on this little, like, I don't even know what they call this. It's like a little stool that you can rock back and forth on, a little backless stool. Uh, My desk is small. It's a little black desk and I just have a lamp on it and it's in the corner of my bedroom and Poppy is sleeping on the bed just over my shoulder and the lights are dim. It's kind of late on a Friday night and I often recorded my 22 days episodes around this time. I would record them usually at the end of the day and so I would sit down and this would be like one of the very last things that I did for the day. And then I would shut off and I would go to sleep and then I would wake up and I would do my ritual. And it was this really beautiful practice of connecting with a card and grounding into the energy of that card and then posting prompts in Discord and chatting with people and hearing about their experiences. And so what I'm connecting to experientially and somatically right now is that I need consistency and I need community and I need ritual and I need spiritual connection, and I need a sense of purpose in order to feel secure. I need to tend to my body. I would do yoga every morning and meditate and then spend time at my altar. And so there was this body, mind, spirit, focus, first thing, first thing after waking up, and I would wake up around sunrise or before it and really greet the day early. And so that's a practice I've gotten back into over the past week, but I had fallen off completely over the last month and it was really causing me misery. Like I was feeling so sad and so down and that was a combination of personal stuff and then also just like not tending to my body and my spirit in the same way and a really sudden drop off. Like one day I stopped doing it and then I just like couldn't continue. And so my commitment to these rituals that have been really life-giving for me was just not there. It was really sporadic. And so was my health. So was my mental health and my emotional health and my spiritual health. And so as I sit with that, I get this like tense feeling and I'm like, why am I still talking about this? Get through it. Let's get back to the security. But I can feel the difference, right? Like my voice even sounds different to me at least, maybe not to you, but to me it feels and it sounds different. Like I can feel the anxiety in my chest. I can feel the tension. I can feel a sort of like racing quality to my breath where it feels shallow, like I'm sort of reaching for air, I'm reaching for something. And then when I bring myself back down, (sighs) 
I can access quiet. And I can feel my feet on the ground. And I can move more slowly and I don't feel rushed. I don't feel like I'm forcing my way through each sentence or like rushing to the finish line. And I can even feel the muscles in my body relaxing. I can feel myself settling into the chair. I'm aware of the surface. I'm aware of the surface beneath my feet, the surface beneath my butt, the surface beneath my arm that's resting on the table, that's holding the guidebook open. Like there's this real awareness and presence. And it's very different. It's so different. It's slower. It's more intentional. It's more easeful. And I even noticed when I recorded yesterday's episode and I thought I was only going to be speaking to my patrons, I noticed myself really like mentally slow down because I felt like I was speaking to an intimate group, a group of people who have been supporting me for a while, who know me quite a bit better than other people on the internet do, and a group that I feel more connected to, that I know better, that I feel safer with. And I noticed the way that I spoke was different. I was more open and more lighthearted. And I'm feeling the sort of like rush that I feel this like implicit notion that people are expecting me to speed up. And it's something I spoke about in the magician episode. The second episode of the 22 days series was about the voice as a tool and how that's something that for me was a long, long, long struggle was coming into my voice and finding a sense of security with my pace my ability to speak and articulate my thoughts at my pace and to not feel rushed and to not feel this sort of like unspoken pressure to speed up or to spit it out or to do it differently. And so there's this security that comes often with slowing down for me. It's honoring of my Taurus placements. It's honoring of my nature in general. Like, I'm not a particularly fast-moving person, and when I try to force myself to be fast, I tend to start feeling insecure because it's just not natural. And so I guess where I'm going with this is that it feels like a big part of security is rooting in our natural rhythm. It's kind of coming back to what the body truly wants and maybe the signals that we tend to ignore or the signals that we tend to suppress or like dress up as something else. It feels like when we come back to the body itself and ask it questions and get curious about what it likes and what it needs, that's how we can generate a sense of security that comes from within as opposed to from without. So I want to get into our tarot card that clarifies the security card. And that tarot card from the Lilifer Tarot, this companion deck, is the King of Wands. And oh my god, the King of Wands, fiery energy. This is often a Sagittarius card, and so we are just coming off of this full moon in Sagittarius. And this king... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just laugh because for the first time I actually noticed that this king is like man spreading in this throne and that there looks like there's like a little flower that's obscuring his like genitals. Yeah, it is a flower. Like you can't see his his dong. I don't know. This also could be a completely genderless figure here. Um, but no dong in sight. I'm gonna stop fixating on this. But he <laughs> he or they um, 
are like sitting in this throne and they have this huge wand in their hand and there are these two flames behind them and they have this like tail that's coming off of them from behind and it's a it's a power pose i mean humans legs or creatures legs are quite open to be sitting naked completely butt ass naked on a throne like this with your legs open is quite the move that calls for a lot of security to be able to do that and so interestingly the figure on the security card is wearing this sort of like jumpsuit and they have a little heart that's obscuring where their business would be And so there's this like attention in both of these cards actually that's being drawn to the groin, being drawn to like where the genitalia would be if these are human figures or like mammals, I guess. And so it feels really curious that in both of these cases, we have this focus on the sacral. And the sacral can be a part that really has to do with generativity and creativity and also power. And so it feels important that there is a kind of focus and emphasis on these areas of the body. When we're talking about security, like how do you root insecurity from the bottom up? How do you root insecurity and feel really stable as you're sitting in your seat? Like, I'm really focusing on my seat and how it feels to be held by this little chair that I can rock back and forth in, but that ultimately is, like, stable. It's not going to fall over. I can move around on it. I can wiggle. I think it's called a TikTok chair. Like, I can tick-tock back and forth. I can move rhythmically back and forth, but there's this inherent stability and security to the chair. It's not going to fall down, and I'm not going to fall off of it but I have the flexibility and the sort of wiggle room to move with it. And that's security too, as opposed to control. Like security is being able to move with the winds of change and being able to kind of like rock and roll with the currents and to trust that we can support ourselves through that process. Whereas control is trying to grip so tightly onto outside factors and control everything outside of ourselves in order to stabilize us whereas security is an internal job it's not an external job and so often I think that it's common for people to get this mixed up and we seek security by attempting to control other people's behavior or by attempting to control the circumstances that we're facing and we really make like this huge gaffe in doing that often And can learn the hard way that when we seek to control other people, it usually doesn't go very well. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) I guess it depends on your, your definition of well, but like if you're seeking happiness and seeking fulfillment and your move toward that fulfillment and happiness is to control other people, that's usually a losing game. And often when things become unstable in our lives or when we get kind of like knocked out of the boat, we might reach and grab for other people and try to like stabilize ourselves by pulling them under. I say we might as if that's an experience that we have often, but obviously I'm speaking metaphorically here. Like we might try to stabilize ourselves by grabbing hold of other people and end up pushing them under in the process. And so there's this sort of like, contrast here that feels important because security is built within the self and of course it depends on material security and like health security and housing security and all of this stuff contributes to our well-being in huge 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 ways like it's foundational um but what i'm talking about more so is like the emotional emotional and internal security that comes through being able to stabilize ourselves through shifting currents that comes through awareness of self and this ongoing process of self-examination and self-investigation where we get to the truth and again i bring it back to the body like what does my body want what does my body need because bodies contain truth and bodies speak truth 
And so if you catch yourself in denial or if you catch yourself seeking control outside of you, it's often time to come back to the body and to ask what's going on. What is it trying to tell you? Because it can speak through the mind's chatter and alert you to the areas where you may be in denial or where you may be like over asserting yourself or under asserting yourself or whatever. And so I bring it back to the body and I'm circling around in a sort of haphazard way here. But what I'm trying to get to is that the King of Wands paired with this security card is really telling me that we can approach life in this sort of unabashed here I am way <laughs> when we really come back to our nakedness. This king of wands is holding their hand over their belly and it almost looks like they're sort of like listening to their body. They have this pretty blank expression. They're holding the wand with their right hand and then the left hand is across the belly. And again, they're sort of like spreading their <laughs> legs open and this flower is growing up to conceal what we would see there. Uh, but there is this like this sort of concentration that I get from them. This hand over the belly feels like they're really tuning into something that's going on within them. And of course, the King of Wands fire energy is a really passionate figure, someone who's usually quite confident and self-possessed, like the picture of, of like inner security, like not, ne not necessarily material security in the same way we'd see with the King of Wands, but like this is someone who's deeply secure with themselves, like they accept themselves, they love themselves, they are a leader, they're passionate, vivacious, full of life, full of energy, and often really sexy. Like this is sort of a sexy, powerful energy. Someone that inspires you and someone that moves with courage and confidence. And so security alongside the King of Wands feels really potent. And the fact that this King of Wands is not moving about, they don't appear to be super active, but they're radiating energy. There are these flames that are coming off the back of their throne and their tail is like pointed up toward the corner of the card, the top corner, and there are lightning bolts around their tail. So there's the sense that even when they're sitting there, appearing to be motionless, they're still emitting this energy of power. And it reminds me a lot of the idea of quiet confidence, how we might see people who are really boastful and arrogant and loud and boisterous and when we're less like attuned to what true confidence looks like, that might look like confidence. But then when you meet someone who has quiet power and someone who's just so embodied and secure within themselves that they don't have to brag, they don't have to show off, they just kind of show up and it's felt and it might not even have to be spoken. They might not even have to say words. You can just sort of feel the confidence radiating off of them. And that's born from security. That's born from grounded and rooted security, rooted confidence. And so it feels so potent and perfect that the flower that's concealing their genitals is like growing up from the ground and we can actually see the roots of this flower on the King of Wands. And similarly, on the security card, we see these flowers beside this figure, and we can also see their roots. And so roots are really beautifully emphasized visually and in the description of this card. And earlier today, I was doing this reading for someone, and the metaphor of a tree and the way that a tree grows came up for it. And it was about facing the unknown. And like this, this tree metaphor is one that comes to me often. I love trees and I love connecting with them, especially when people are going through periods of upheaval and change that feels really daunting and scary and overwhelming. Tree medicine can be so, so powerful because trees are quiet power. They're like the epitome of quiet power. Like, spend some time next to a tree. It doesn't have to assault you with its confidence. It doesn't have to prove itself to you. It doesn't have to speak. It doesn't even have to move. A tree just sits in its power. And it's quiet. 
And that happens because trees grow so slowly and sustainably and they shoot their roots down deep into the earth. And that stability and foundation that we may not be able to see from the surface is what offers them that sort of sturdy, uh, immovable nature, that security. And so I would love for you, if you want to, to think about what helps you feel rooted. And you might actually want to imagine roots descending from the bottoms of your feet into the earth. So why don't we do that? Let's take a second. I'll walk you through it. If you have the space and you have a moment to actually sit and close your eyes, let's do it. So go ahead and take a deep breath in. And a long exhale. And do a couple more of those. You might want to sit up a little bit straighter and taller, roll your shoulders, adjust your seat, do whatever you've got to do to feel a little bit more grounded and stable. And if you are sitting and you're able to sit with two feet on the ground, just tune in briefly to the feeling of those feet on the earth. What does it feel like to have the bottoms of your feet touching a surface that is calm and stable? And as you continue to breathe, just imagine that you're absorbing that energy of calm and stability through the bottoms of your feet and that with each in-breath, you absorb a little bit more, bringing it all the way up from the bottoms of your feet, through your legs and your seat, and your abdomen, your arms, your neck, your head all the way up to your crown. And as you exhale, imagine that any feelings of insecurity, instability, anxiety are flushing out of your body and flowing back into the earth where they can be absorbed and composted and transmuted into generative energy. And if your hands are free, you can place one or both of them over your heart space. And move your energy or move your focus from the bottoms of your feet to the palms of your hands. And as you place the palms of your hands over your heart, maybe you can feel the rhythm of your heart. 
Maybe you can feel your chest expanding as you breathe in. And sinking back down as you breathe out. And imagine that the grounded energy that you absorbed through your feet from the earth is present here in your heart space too. And as you kind of feel the rock back and forth of your breath and your heartbeat, Remembering the idea that security is not stillness necessarily. It's us being able to move with the current and to keep our center. And so similarly, as your chest rises and falls and as your heart beats, it's offering this rhythm and movement and you get to find your center within that. You get to find your security within that. And if it feels comfortable to you, you can even gently rock back and forth a little bit. Keeping your feet planted on the ground. So you have that stability to come back to you. And then you can come back to center and still your body again. And we're going to move back toward the feet, drawing our attention again to the bottoms of the feet planted on the earth. And now imagine that there are roots growing from your feet into the center of the earth, traveling through each layer of rock and soil through all the harder layers and the hot layers and every single layer of earth until you reach the core. It's hot. There's a lot of heat. <laughs> it's hot as fuck at the center of the earth. And so you might feel a sense of heat or maybe some intensity, but it's not overwhelming. And imagine that the root system that you've grown all the way down to the center of the earth can draw the power and energy up through it, gently diluting it until it becomes a source of power that's safe for you to connect with by the time it reaches your feet. And so as the roots are nourished by this life force energy that the center of the earth is offering, it spreads out through each root branching out beneath the earth, traveling all the way up until it reaches the surface and flows into your body. And now imagine that this energy is flowing again up from the bottoms of your, of your feet through your legs and your abdomen and your head and your neck and Every part of your body is nourished by it. And take a deep breath. Take a few. Just see what it feels like to sit with this.
And as you continue to breathe, just know that you're absorbing this vitality and this power and this energy. <laughs> this is about as raw and powerful as it gets. And as you exhale, you're releasing trepidation and doubt. And as you send that back down into the earth, it's able to nourish. It's able to provide in its own way. Just not for you. Because you get this stuff. You get this new stuff. You get the energy. You get the good stuff. And so if you took your hands off of your heart, you might want to put them back onto your heart now, onto your chest. And see if you notice anything different here. Tuning into the heart space and into the hands, what do you feel? might want to introduce a little bit of movement again, just gently rocking back and forth. What does it feel like now? How does security adapt when it meets your personal power? What does it feel like to be embodied in security and power? When you're ready, you can come back to stillness. And then place your hands palm up in the receptive pose. Palms up on your knees. And take a few deep breaths. Maybe you want to sit up a little taller. Okay. And when you're ready, we can release that. If your eyes were closed, you can blink them open again. You can move. You can come back to the space and notice how your environment looks. Maybe things look a little bit different or feel a little bit different. And then just like this king of wands, let's go ahead and place our left hands over our bellies and our right hand on our, like, as if we're holding a scepter or a wand and it's by our side. And so with your eyes open, seated in this posture, <laughs> might feel a little weird, but just pretend that huge wand <laughs> I'm having a hard time not making innuendos, but imagine that huge wand is just like in your hand right here. What would you create from this place of security? If you could access the state constantly or consistently at least, what might you do? What would you do with your power? Okay. 
So that was not planned, but um, <laughs> I'm glad we did that. I hope that landed. I hope that resonated and helped someone out there. I feel like a bug just flew into my nose as I was speaking. I don't think it did, but it's been happening a weird at a weird frequency lately. Um, okay, anyway, let's move into our song to round things out here. So our song is Feels Right by Big Pig. I love this song and I love this artist. I'm just looking at the lyrics so I can read them out to you. So this song for me is really perfect as they usually are, IMO. It starts off outside my guys trying to find a little spare time. Unwind with me a minute. I've got red wine, no lie. And since there's two of us, let's put the tunes up on loud. I want to see what you make me do and how I know you think it may be too soon. Come round and show me what you've got. And so right off the bat, we've got this sort of like challenge. <laughs> it's like, show me what you've got. I want to see what you make me do and how which might feel a little bit like passive or submissive, but there's a sort of power that comes with this receptivity of like, show me what you can do. I know you think it may be too soon, but come round and show me what you've got. And then it goes, I heard you want to be in the driver's seat, so keep up. And do you promise me that you'll honor me? Don't give up because it feels right. And if I follow you, I know that I should hesitate, but it feels right. And just the thought of you gives me the taste I know I'll crave, but it feels right. And if I follow you, I know that I should hesitate, but it feels right. And just the thought of you gives me the taste I know I'll crave, but it feels right. And so there's this repetition of this idea that there's like doubt, right? Like they should hesitate. They shouldn't follow this person. Um, but also, and, and this like I this question of, do you promise me that you'll honor me? So there's this, a little bit of concern or maybe insecurity about how they'll be treated, but then this return over and over again to, it feels right. And so that is such a beautiful example of security because security isn't necessarily the absence of doubt or even the absence of insecurity. At times it's waffling, at times it's moving between doubt and confidence, questioning ourselves, questioning our experience, questioning our knowing, and then coming back to what we know, coming back to our truth, coming back to our intuition. And so the singer the songwriter is continually coming back to this place and they might have their hesitations and they even say again, I know that I should hesitate, but it feels right. And so there's this sort of argument between like the rational mind that's saying intellectually, I feel like I should, should quote, should do this thing. I should hold back. I should pause. I shouldn't follow you. But then there's this instinct and this intuition that takes over and says, but it feels right. And so I'm going to. And then in the next part of the song, it goes, fine lines, don't step unless you're ready now to make him upset. I wouldn't take you for the shy type. Not yet, but then again, who knows? Honey, there's no ties, no net. You've got to follow with your instinct. What's next? No sense in trying to find reason or regret when nothing's set in stone. <laughs> And so again, there's this like, <laughs> like no one knows, nothing's set in stone, but there's no point in trying to reason with life or to focus on what we might regret. Instead, focus on your instincts, follow what feels right to you, follow your gut and let that lead the way. And then again, it goes into, I heard you want to be in the driver's seat, so keep up. And do you promise me that you'll honor me? Don't give up because it feels right. And so there's this like encouragement and this sort of coaching that they're giving to this hypothetical other person where it's like, you want to take the lead? Then show me. Then keep up with me. Then tell me that you're going to show up for me and you're going to treat me the right way. And don't give up because we know that this is right. And so there's this like continual rhythm to this song of 
the the acknowledgement of the doubt and the acknowledgement of the hesitation, but the reassurance that they each know their truth and this encouragement to follow their truth, this encouragement to follow their instincts, to follow their gut. So I love this song as the answer. <laughs> it's so perfect. And I think it really beautifully embodies the sort of dance that we experience when we might be learning to trust ourselves and learning to find security within ourselves and within our intuition. Because it's often not a natural, well, let's say it's natural, but it's not something that all of us get to experience is having our intuition and our knowing affirmed and having our instincts affirmed because a lot of people have a whole lot of reasons to cause us to doubt ourselves. Like the systems that we live within and people who might try to take advantage of us have every reason to cause us to doubt ourselves and to cause us to doubt our knowing because our intuition and our instincts are incredibly powerful. And when we can access that kind of power and the security in trusting ourselves, we can become quite fierce. And it's really hard to knock someone off of their little king of wands throne when they are confident in their knowing, when they're confident in, and not in like an arrogant or like, um, what's the right word for this? Not in like a, I'm unwilling to be wrong kind of way but more in a like, I trust myself, I trust my instincts, I trust where my intuition leads me, and I trust my ability to rebound and come back to my center when I might get destabilized, when life might surprise me or shock me or break me down. I trust in my ability to come back to my center and to find my inner security, even in circumstances where my external security might be lacking or I might feel unstable. I'm going through my progressed moon in Scorpio, and it's in my sixth house at this moment. And it's, I think it's probably, it's very close to my natal Pluto, Lilith, Juno <laughs> mashup in Scorpio, which is one of the more touchy parts of my chart that aspects, like, forms my huge fixed cross. And anyway, it's like a very sensitive axis for me and opposes my Taurus sun and Mercury, squares my moon. And so as my progress moon in Scorpio is very rapidly approaching that mashup, I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling nervous because it's a really like hot button part of my chart. And already the buildup to this experience has been intense paired with some of the ongoing transits. Um, but I bring this up because the progress moon in Scorpio is known to be probably the most challenging progress moon phase because the moon is in fall in Scorpio, which means that it traditionally uh, is more challenged. It has a harder time existing and getting its needs met and feeling resourced and stable and secure. And the moon loves to feel resourced and stable and secure and cared for and nourished and all of these things. And when the moon is in its opposite polar sign, Taurus, it's very well resourced. It loves to be in Taurus, but in Scorpio, it can have a tougher time. And that's reductive and not true across the board for people with natal Scorpio moon. Um, but it can be a tough time and it can be a tough phase, especially the progress moon phase. And so for me, I've been grappling with what it means to find security in the midst of material insecurity, in the midst of uh, like emotional upheaval and loss and grief and betrayal and all sorts of experiences that have been really emotionally challenging. But what it's done for me so far is... I had to burp. <laughs> what it's done for me so far is it's it's reaffirmed my strength. And because this is squaring my natal moon in Leo, uh, represented by the strength card in the tarot, it's been a challenge to my strength. That's at times knocked the wind out of me and caused me to kind of like fall to my knees. It's come with quite a few tower moments, some sequential, some like right after the other. And it's felt sort of like crisis after crisis. And I'm just about halfway through this experience, not even maybe like, I don't know, 
40% through. And so I have a ways to go. And just tonight I was thinking like, what do I have to do to resource myself when I don't feel resourced, when I feel isolated, when I feel lonely, when I feel fearful about like my stability and even my safety at times. Like I've had my safety threatened quite a few times throughout this progress moon phase and that's been a concern. And so there's been like these threats of, of all kinds and I don't want to exaggerate. Like it's not like I'm in active danger by any means and, and like I'm okay. Uh, but I have had some scary experiences and that's something that I've had to confront with courage and to find ways to stabilize myself through a lot of like meditative practices and visualizations and similar journey work. Like the thing that we just did spontaneously has been an incredible lifeline for me, especially in the moments where my material reality was not reflecting the type of security that I needed to feel within. So I offer that to you as sort of a parting word that like if you're going through a time where you're feeling very tossed about and very like unstable <laughs> in, in any and all senses of the word, um, know that there are resources unseen and seen, intangible and tangible that can be there for you, even if you don't have access to the types of resources that can get you out of the situation that you're in, know that there are resources available to you that can help you find your center. And sometimes that can be life-changing to just be able to access a moment of peace even. Like five seconds can, can be a huge shift if we're in constant upheaval and stress and crisis It can be really empowering to even just get like five seconds of calm or a minute or an hour or whatever. And so I hope that maybe that little visualization thing that we did or like other journey work or free meditations online or walking in nature, connecting with a tree, sitting under a tree, hugging a tree, that these can be free, available resources for you to support you through the moments when you feel like shit is just hitting the fan or you're having trouble accessing that security. Just know that things are available to you and it might just take a little bit of resourcefulness and creativity for you to get there. Okay, that's all. Thank you as always. You guys are really, really great. I appreciate you and... I'm so happy to have you here. You're cool. Thank you. Thanks for being a part of the sphere. As I mentioned on the last episode, I just introduced a new community-oriented Patreon tier. I was going to call it community, but I'm just calling it pod or podcast. And it's $4 a month. It gives you access to our private episodes on my Patreon And I'm moving the new and full moon readings over there and I'll be doing like more ritual work and building those out a little bit more so that you guys get in addition to our usual readings and astro overview, you also get like a little new moon ritual and full moon ritual. Um, You also get weekly episodes with channeled messages and that tier also gives you access to our private discord channels where we have chats about other stuff related to astrology and mysticism and divination and all the stuff we talk about here. Anyway, that is all. Thank you. I love you. And I hope you have a really nourishing weekend or day whenever you're listening to this. And I am sending you big hugs and the energy of security. Take care. (laughs) 